So far we have spoken about three types of electrochemical cells, namely voltaic cells, concentration cells, and fuel cells. Now in this lecture we're going to discuss a fourth type of electrochemical cell called an electrolytic cell. Now electrolytic cells are electrochemical cells that are supplied with an outside source of electrons, which allows reactant favorite redox reactions to occur. Now recall that voltaic cells convert chemical energy into electrical work via the process of moving electrons in a spontaneous product favorite reaction. So unlike voltaic cells, electrolytic cells do the opposite. They use up electrical work to power reactant favorite non-spontaneous reactions. Now let's look at an example. Let's look at the decomposition of molten sodium chloride. Now what molten means is that it's heated to a certain temperature so that it goes from a solid state to a liquid state. This is not an aqueous state. It's a liquid state of sodium chloride, meaning these guys dissociate, but there is no water in our mixture. There's no solvent. So let's look at our electrolytic electrochemical cell. So it's composed of not two half cells, but one half cell, so one beaker. Now within this beaker we have melted or liquid sodium chloride. So we have a bunch of sodium molecules or sodium ions and chloride ions. So these two electrodes are inert, so they're made from the same exact material. And what happens is we connect these guys to an outside power source like a battery or a voltaic cell. Now what happens is this battery powers it, allows electrons to transfer in this direction. So if they transfer this way, that means this metal obtained these electrons. So this metal or electrode forms a negative charge, while this electrode forms a positive charge because electrons will be taken away from this electrode. So since this develops a negative charge, let's see what happens with the portion that's immersed into our liquid. Well, we said some of the sodium molecules will be moving around, and since they are positively charged, they will be attracted to this negatively charged electrode. Likewise, these chloride atoms are negatively charged, so they will be attracted to this positively charged electrode. So we'll have a separation of sodium and chloride in our liquid. Now, what happens when our sodium positively charged ion hits this negatively charged electrode? Well, some of the electrons will transfer into our sodium molecule. And that means our sodium will be reduced. So this section is where reduction occurs. And that means, by definition, it must be our cathode. Now, likewise, when these molecules or ions hit this little uh, electrode, they give off some of these electrons because electrons want to move from a negative charge to a positive charge. So when this hits it, electrons travel inside this electrode and they enter our circuit and travel all the way down here. So what happens when electrons leave? Well, this guy is oxidized into diatomic gas and so it evaporates into our environment and this is where oxidation takes place and so by definition this guy is our anode. So notice two important differences uh, between voltaic cells and electrolytic cells. In So our uh, cathode in this situation is negative and our anode is positive but in voltaic cell cells, it's reverse. Our cathode is positive and our anode is negative. And that's because this electron doesn't travel this way like it does in voltaic cells, but it travels this way due to this outside battery source. Another important difference, obviously, is the fact that in electrolytic cells, we have outside battery source. We have an outside power source. Uh, but in this uh, in uh, voltaic cells, we don't have it. Now, so let's look at the oxidation reaction that occurs in our anode. So, two of these molecules, two of these ions, give off those two electrons 
forming our diatomic gas molecule. And this diatomic gas molecule evaporates into our environment. Now let's look at our reduction reaction. This reduction reaction occurs in the following manner. Two sodium ions react with two electrons when they hit this metal, they take up those two electrons forming two sodium solid molecules or two moles of sodium solid molecules. Now our net reaction is just the addition of this guy to this guy. Notice that electrons cancel and we simply get the following net redux reaction. Now if we were to look up uh, the electron potentials or the cell potentials for this reaction and this reaction we would get the following voltages. Now to find the net or the final cell voltage we simply add these guys up and we get negative 4.072 volts. So that means that this much voltage must be supplied to our electrolytic cell by this battery to power this reaction. So decomposition of this guy requires energy. Now other decomposition reactions um, are very popular. For example, decomposition of water. Now in the next lecture we're going to look at the decomposition of aqueous sodium chloride. Now that's a little bit different and we'll see how.